Secret Friends Unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast episode 480. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, joined by Charlie Carton. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Wonderful Midwestern heat wave. Good thing that climate change is a myth. So, you know, there must be some other reason that it's 90, 90 degrees in here with, you know, 97% humidity. It's great. Well, you know, if you want to wait to cool off, go to the movie theaters. Oh, that that's is what we used true. to do in the past. That right? is very true. Although we uh, we have a weird weekend at the movies. We don't have a big hitter coming out until next week. I think uh, The Quiet Place, the prequel, comes out. But this week it's that Bike Riders movie, which I'd still like to see. The one with Tom That'll Hardy. bring in all the kids, Tom yeah, Hardy Elvis. and Elvis. And the, yeah, and Elvis. Tom Hardy. So you got Bane and Elvis on motorcycles. Oh, but anyway, no, uh, we're having a good time. Tonight is uh, uh, the West Michigan Whitecaps. Star Wars night and the second year in a row we're going as a, as a chapter uh, in the USS Grand Petoskey, our SFI chapter. So we're kind of excited about that. Uh, but yeah, we're here and we're talking about geek stuff as we always do. But before we do, we, of course, love to pay homage and pay the bills with uh, a little plug, plug, plug for our Secret Friends Unite Patreon squad over at patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite. You can visit that website. Uh, try out our wares for seven days for free. Uh, also get ad-free versions of our shows. Um, and uh, try out our additional content. As I said, Todd and I do a great show called Spinner Rack where we talk about some comics. I do a show called The Facts Geek Life where we take a classic series and a season of that and myself and a guest break down a handful of episodes. We're always having a good time. Uh, on our Friends with Benefit fits with level over there in the squad is john sedorf the phoenix sisters cosplay brendan myers Corey in hd and matthew keel our bffs the delightful nias family of the twin cities sean stella and henry we are very grateful for all of you and what you uh contribute to what we do here so again uh patreon.com Slash Secret Friends Unite if you're listening on one of our free feeds and want to get rid of those pesky commercials and hear more about the stuff that we love and enjoy. That's where you find us. So speaking of loving enjoyment, my goodness, this oh, this is this is a British. I see, I see it's it's actually a Brit title. Uh from September of 1988, we have Thundercats and the Galaxy Rangers. So some kind of British mash mashup. Yes, 24th September. Uh, issue 80 for 38, 38p. Uh, we'll get you this wonderful piece of work. What do we got going on here? <laughs> what do we got going on here? Oh, Charlie. So this is a British publication that yeah. Marvel uh, published overseas. They had created their UK arm back in the day. So essentially yeah. they, um, the Thundercats comics in the US ended at issue 25. But, oh, the, not but it actually right. went to 125 in the UK, very similar to what yeah. happened with the Transformers in the UK. It continued on after the US version died off. So um, this is that version of, of what it was in the UK. And Galaxy Rangers, a lot of people may not remember this cartoon. That sounds, sounds it, familiar. Kick-ass theme song, really cool. It was basically these guys in the Old West. These were the lawmen that would come in on these cyber horses and defeat crime in the old west in spaceville so it was kind of like um Space, spaceville space yeah, town. spaceville yeah space town <laughs> and it was really a cool show i really liked it it was unique art style great theme song but i didn't even know they had a comic book but apparently once again they had a comic book here and i try to find right. out information about it there isn't but it's a lot of original stories i mean the original yeah. thundercats ran for a hundred like the actual cartoon 125 episodes really? and um, yeah, well, I, I i feel like it was a flash in the pan it was like four seasons 19, yeah. yeah four seasons wow. yeah right the first season That's, was 65 that, I mean, episodes yeah. and then they did another 60 episodes but it was put out over three right. more seasons that um yeah even the gi joe cartoon which was i mean it was i was talking about this with my cousin yesterday was so wildly popular that it led that even just after three or four years of it being around led to the production of the largest 
toy vehicle in the history of of toys, the USS Flag. Um, but the cartoon itself was only at what had three miniseries. The third miniseries uh, led into only two seasons of a show. Then it had a TV movie, which was direct to video. It was offered. Well, we're not talking about GI yeah. Joe. We're talking about Thundercats oh, and Alex Rangers. But anyway, <laughs> yes, I'm uh, I, I'm on I'm on a tangent. But this does remind me of. Uh, another British publication that could be related to G.I. Joe, but I won't bring it up. So here's a question about yes. British Marvel. Is it, is it now gone? Cause you just don't hear anything about it. So I would assume I'm assuming it it's just back. nothing original. Now it is just, yeah. they publish what they do in the U U S over yeah. the UK, but yeah, they had some really unique issues. That's yeah. a few others. Uh, yeah. I think, that, I, I think, I think it is don't run for a while. It's pretty impressive that the Thundercats, uh, which seems very niche to me, and because of course it's for guys of our age, uh, and the Transformers was such the bigger hit over in the UK. I think that that's fascinating. I think your big toy company over there was Palatoy, if I'm not mistaken, at least an arm of Kenner, uh, or sure. something that just that, that just rings a bell, but anyway, um, fantastic. Well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, back in the 80s. Uh, someone who had a hand in some of these British Marvel publications, somebody who had kind of had a finger in every pie, was our senior news correspondent, Madam Webb. You know, uh, working behind the shadows to orchestrate all things entertainment, this definitely would have been her bag. But these days, she's cooling her heels out in that California sun down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine uh, with the latest scoops for us. So let's go check it out. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Well, yes, uh, as we talked about, Marvel had the UK imprint. Well, you helped Marvel form a imprint in Bolivia. And you <laughs> brought in characters such as the Care Bears, Rainbow Bright, and also Casper. And you had them create a new character just based on you. And it was called um, Madam Mayhem. And you know what? You got mad at the little orphans. You threw uh, bricks at them. You collected cats, and it didn't do very well. Well, hopefully she wasn't also running a big cartel because I hear Bolivia. I think of you know Bolivian marching powder. Oh, hopefully she wasn't involved. Well, in maybe that. it was just the cover. They they actually were Marvel was interested in a drug ring and let <laughs> Madame Web run the comics, and that'll launder the money. Yes, please don't come find us now, Disney. What is this Enjoy white? It. What is this I, white I, coating in all these boxes? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what came in the box from Diamond? I don't understand. Oh my gosh. Well, speaking about things that are horrible. Now, Todd, shame on you. You've not seen the first film, so you didn't get to see Sophie Bacon give us that beautiful smile. But now Smile is getting a sequel with a poor man's Lady Gaga. What's going on here? T talk to me about this trailer. Yeah, so Smile 2, Smile 1 did very well a couple of years ago. Yeah. I think it was 2022, 2023. Yeah. Getting a, getting a sequel. I've not seen it. I am intrigued. And they really missed it, Charlie. It should have called been called Smiles, not just Smile 2, because, you know, more than right. one. Uh -huh. And there's more than there's more than one smilings in this because as you see in this trailer, uh, the the whole smiling thing. Not to spoil too much of it, and obviously I don't see any inherent connection to the first film, especially because of the way it ends, which Todd I won't spoil for you. Um, that if someone witnesses a, a specter causing another person to take their own life, death becomes attached to the person who 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 lives in that scenario, and then it and then it follows them around, and then they'll see people smiling creepily at them and either people are there or they aren't there, but they'll just, they'll give them this big Joker Richter smile. And it's just, it's, it's a horrible man. And this movie looks absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. So we're going to have a, we're going to have a smile, maybe a smile spoiler cast. Maybe, you know, you and I'll go see this, but maybe the week beforehand, we'll talk about the previous film. Um, Cause th this looks like, this looks like the jam. So are you in? Are you ready to smile? I want mean, to. I want to see the first one. Um, and so, when you mention the fact that if you see this, then it essentially it's passed along to you. Um, right. So the trailer basically, we see um, her, her friend um, comes into the room, breaks in, and says, "Oh my God, I'm seeing something." He looks up, gets a smile on his face, kills himself, and this is just in the trailer, right. so it's not good. Right. But then she sees that happen. So eventually, it's been 
passed along to her, right? Right. So that yeah, there's some kind of a specter or or yeah. ghost that that haunts. It's kind of like the the ring where you know you see the video and sure. then seven days later you die. Okay. Um, kind of the vibe of and but, like it yeah, follows, but, right? You, it passes it along and right. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the the woman in question is some kind of pop star, but who but who looks very lady lady Gaga esque. Yeah with the short blonde hair and the funky outfits and stuff. So this looks great. I'm assuming though, I don't have the link open. I'm assuming this is dropping in September, October. Um, I can tell you in a second. Uh, Cause be basically go. we're going to talk about all of the horror films coming out. Right. Uh, in 2024, right. this one comes out October 18th. Oh, very good. Right during smoke. Time. So yes, that's my proposal. We should have a spoiler cast around this film because it'll be Shocktober and the week that precedes it or one of the weeks precedes it. We should talk about the first film. If you watch it and like it and then I'll rewatch it and we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah. I just got to squeeze I, it in. It's, it's good, I mean, yeah. we've got time. It's, yeah. you know, we've got, um, yeah. you know, yeah. Shocktober it's right in the wheelhouse. So, you know, maybe we do that before Shocktober. Um, yeah. and then we watch this. So we'll, we'll see. Gotcha, gotcha. Very good. And as you said, dog-legging into talking about horror films between now and the end of the year, we've got uh, a list of some other films that we've already been talking about, uh, including uh, A Quiet Place Day One, which actually comes out next week, June 28th. Uh, the the beginning, so it's a prequel to the first movie. You don't have uh, you don't have Tuna in it. You don't have Tuna's wife or Tuna's kids. Um, but you've got uh, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Joseph Quinn, and Alex Wolf from the Naked Brothers Band. That that kid's still working. I hope he has a guitar. I want to see him swinging a guitar around. That would be great. Uh, and That's then you a deep do cut. have. I know. I know. well, I just I recognize the name. Uh, but uh, you also have um, ba, 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 the Maxine. The black, yeah. No. No. I was oh. it's still in the from the, the the black the black actor. Um, Who's in I, it it, it does not say it in the list here, so I don't remember. It's, yeah, it's it's in the trailer. But anyway, apparently his appearance created some kind of continuity gap because he's in the second one, mm-hmm. that same character, and I don't know. So I'm, I'm confused. But yes, Maxine, we have the return of Todd's <laughs> Todd's favorite female actress, Mia Goss. It's You've not seen a real that, name. That, I don't believe it. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, have you seen that movie X? Uh, that she I haven't in. seen any of these films yet. It's I'm like, I, so, I probably should it, watch them. I just haven't gotten around so, to it. Yeah, it's so graphic that, yes, that don't, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, Mia Goth kind of has uh, a niche where she plays um, kind of a, kind of a, sexually liberated woman. And it looks like this is an adaptation of a, uh, basically an adult film star in the 1980s um, that is centered around Los Angeles, the San Fernando Valley, where apparently a lot of pornography is produced, apparently, um, and a string of serial murders that happened there that were somewhat evocative of the Son of Sam, which happened in New York City in the, at the end of the 1970s. Um, so, yes, uh, and what a cast. Elizabeth uh, Debenecki, Giancarlo Esposito, Kevin Bacon, and Halsey, who is, oh, I like Halsey. She's a pop star. Um, so that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, everything I see on the trailer, like, that looks awesome. I yeah. need to dig in. I don't know when I'll be able to do it. I'm yeah. on My life in the next, like, two or three weeks is a little bit crazy. Oh, so. for sure. You'll, you'll get you'll get past it. All right. Okay. I talked about I talked about the first two. So okay. what else we got here? So we've got Long Legs coming out July twelfth, and I've been hearing a lot about this film. That is, this is one of the scariest films people have ever seen. Which I don't know if that's just hyping it up. But um, this film is directed by Oz Perkins, which is funny because he's the son of Anthony Perkins oh, from Psycho. From Psycho. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he has helmed the Black Coat's daughter. I am the pretty thing that lives in the house in Gretel and Hansen, uh, Hansel and Loglegs. <laughs> um, bop, da, sure. fondu, bop, yes, Gretel and Hansen. Correct. And uh, <laughs> Longleg appears to continue that streak with a story about serial killings and occult practices. It follows, and the guest alum Micah Monroe play the FBI rookie. Okay. A sign of the case, and the great Nicholas Cage plays the serial killer threatening to blow apart the low-key vibes that made Perkins' previous movies so great. So this kind oh, of gives me vibe of almost like the black phone or something like that. Oh, okay. But, could, um, be a, could be a sleeper. Wow. Yeah. And this one is neon, so this will get a release in the theaters and then uh, maybe streaming shortly after. Might be in Shutter. Oh, cool. I don't know. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, um, 
I can do the yeah, next one too. Cuckoo, uh, August 2nd, uh, it stars Euphoria breakout Hunter Schaefer uh, as the lead. Uh, writer and directed, ri- written and directed by Tillman Singer. Schaefer plays Gretchen, an American teen who goes with her father and his new family to a resort in the Alps. There she encounters the devious Mr. Koenig, played by Dan Stevens, who's having a, a renaissance. Oh, yeah. He's, a, Dan, a Dan Stevens essence. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So he apparently has plans for Gretchen and her sister. So once again, another horror film. This is also by Neon. So we got Long Legs and Cuckoo, both by Neon. Um, looking, looking, and, looking to have a, a bit of a summer. Uh, this next one we've talked about. This is the next uh, M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong film, Trap. Uh, which again, much like a lot of his films is like, this is just not the way people talk, but whatever. Um, but, uh, no, this is starring, uh, Josh Hartnett, uh, heart throb from the late 1990s, uh, where we find out that he in taking his daughter, uh, to a pop concert where the pop star is M. Night Shyamalan's daughter in real life, uh, is an actual serial killer who, you know, gets a blip on his phone. So he has to go into a, into a bathroom stall and, and bring up the camera where he has his victim stored in his basement, but the police are surrounding the arena and he's got to get out. So that's what the film is about. So it's like a reverse, it's like a reverse uh, sting, which makes it really interesting. So yeah. And you know, it's different, which I respect. Yeah. I, I hope for a big turnaround because M night Shyamalan's films, even at best are like 50% of it is like, uh, you know, old the beach that makes you get old and uh what was another one of his oh the one about the grandparents or whatever it was just yeah he just can't write he writes people like george lucas writes people as far as the way they talk and it's really it pulls you out of the movie because it feels yeah. so very fake I like the last so one we did but that was an adaptation of a book so yeah the material it, it, you can only do so much if you've got bad material or you've got yeah poor writing. yeah yeah exactly correct uh, and then I'll grab this next one because I got hopes beyond hope this movie's going to be a hit, but I uh, really expect to be disappointed. And that is a interquill in the Alien series. It's called Alien Romulus for August 16th. Uh, Fetty Alvarez is the director. He gave us a remake of The Evil Dead, which I have not seen, but it looked absolutely terrifying. And don't don't breathe. I think I saw that one. That one was maybe five or six years ago. It's about a, a break in and it wasn't the guy blind, but he was also like Jack yeah. Bauer. So he was like shooting at him and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a set to looks to set between alien, uh, the original film from 1979 and aliens, the iconic classic from 1986, uh, about, uh, it's the same thing. A group of people find a ship that has the face huggers on them. And then the trailers and, and then all hell breaks loose. The trailers have been, I think very exciting. You know, some people running down one of these very sterile looking white hallways with, 50 face huggers, ch- you know, chase them like they were cats. Yeah, and they have, and they have no yeah. weapons like the colonial Marines. So it yeah, makes exactly. for a then far you, different you, experience. You have the little sleeper tubes and you're panning along. You see one that's open with blood splattered absolutely yeah. everywhere. So it looks, it looks truly horrendous. My, my honest God feeling is that it's, it probably is not really going to, really going to deliver but it's closer to the bottom of my top 10 so that's a good thing all right oh boy is this a remake of deliverance that's up next no it is not it is not the deliverance oh, is not getting a remake no oh, okay okay no um but this is lee child lee daniels who has been a director done indie stuff um he did precious you know remember the what is it sapphire the yeah whatever uh, but you know he's doing horror which is, i i like as a okay. um I, well, this is a Netflix release, so quite honestly, it's going to – there's not much here about it, um, so we can skip that one. But if you want a horror film on Netflix, go there. I'll hit the next one, though. Blink twice. Yeah, August 23rd, Zoe Kravitz, who we know her dad, Lenny, and she has been an actress. She's directing this one, and she's already done a movie before called Blink Twice. Uh, or sorry, no, this is her movie, Blink Tice. Sorry. Just, uh, just Blink Once. <laughs> yes, exactly. So basically, this is about Naomi Aki, who is a waitress who is invited to the island of a charismatic tech mogul, Channing Tatum, playing at type. Oh, you know, boy. we always think of him as a tech mogul, you know, not not dancing or leading G.I. Yes. Joe. Uh, he <laughs> turns turns out the rich people are up to no good, leading to a story that feels like a darker version of Glass Onion. Um, this one could be interesting. I did see the trailer. It yeah. looked fairly creepy. Um, nice. Moving on to the next thing that I predict will be trash and will fail will be the remake of The Crow on August 24th. I saw this trailer again recently and holy crap. Gen Xers hate everything, but they really hate it when younger generations steal their culture. Nailed it. 
<laughs> you can yeah, get off my lawn with the crow. The crow was such a seminal film for us as Gen Xers. Oh yeah, we talked about Great yeah, soundtrack. we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it on this show maybe two years ago in the summertime because we were we were doing a series on '90s movies and how they hold up. But yeah, you've got uh, Eric Draven is uh, it, the, the guy from it. He's a he's a Skarsgård and FKA Twigs. That's not. It's not it looks terrible, Todd. I don't know what else to really say about this. I don't know why they are re going going after recreating this the yeah, same story just, when they could do something yeah. new with the crow and do something different. Right. But you know what? Uh, they must have the rights, and yep. we'll see and maybe, how maybe this goes. One of the, maybe it's one of those they got to use it or they lose it. So, um, not a case of use it or lose lose it, but case of a heritage sequel that that I have hopes for is Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which we will get in sep. September, uh, Tim Burton's classic 1988 film, which was a stalwart of our childhood uh, with, of course, Michael Keaton before Batman. And then we had uh, not returning roles from Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis. But we are getting back in the cast uh, Winona Ryder, who was young Lydia in the film. We get her daughter. Uh, she's everywhere. Jenna Ortega. And then, of course, we get Catherine O'Hara back, but uh, not the dad. <laughs> <laughs> for reasons we don't say it happens um and then be and, and they've got some you know new cast members including willem dafoe and i think that um they're adding on monica bellucci as beel juice's wife i thought yes. i read that somewhere it doesn't say that here i think that that's fantastic i like it um all right oh. i've seen it I, I, yeah I, I was gonna say i've seen a trailer for this next one but when yeah, yeah. speak no evil september 13th uh this one is basically an adaptation of a danish film called speak no evil it's being brought back christian tadruff is directing this um but this one is really interesting because it's about kind of a conversation we had earlier charlie about adults meeting another couple they become friends very quickly and uh one of those right. friends is james mcavoy they in they basically in, um invite them to their house and they yeah. mentioned he's a doctor and then you just find out that essentially nope can't trust him he's changed some bits we of his story and things are going downhill very quickly very erratic right. and james yeah. boy is very uh yeah yeah terrifying creepiness. in this bit with yeah, without a doubt about it. So yeah, that seems like this would be a scary, scary one to watch. But uh, let's see what else we got. Oh boy, I guess I scrolled down a little too far. Uh, speaking of the the substance on on the twentieth of September, sounds like it, foreign film, French film. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The substance is not a French film. <laughs> well, no, no, it says oh, it says French filmmaker. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. And, and so it's I'll, the next one. Yeah, uh, so, so the substance, basically, Demi Moore plays a fitness icon who gets fired at age 50, seeks out a disturbing treatment called the substance, Moore plays alongside Dennis Quaid and Margaret Qualley, make it for one of the most anticipated movies of the year. So this sounds like it's going to be like, um, like A Devil's Finner. Curse, yeah. Monkey's yeah, Paw. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, The Stuff was a great film. We should definitely watch that oh, okay. uh, if you have not right. seen it. But this one and, is like, to be good. We got a one-two punch. We got another French filmmaker with Never Let Go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 hopes to be get to the really last go. three sentences. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's good. There we go. Uh, the film follows a family of a child who may or may not be possessed. Okay. And, uh, otherwise, it's a lot of talk about how great. And Halle Berry is in the lead. So okay. see how this one right. goes. Well, we already talked about Smile Two. That's October eighteen. We have the oh, we have the third film in the the Terrifier saga. Uh, surprise horror hit in twenty twenty two. I do not recall. They you. Are very tiny films that have made a lot of money and now have a cult following. Oh. Uh, well, they are them. available to watch on some services, but man, they are extreme gore. Is what yeah, I understand. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it says extreme gore and implicit misogyny of the Terrifier films aren't for everyone, but even the squeamish can appreciate uh, the direct uh, the David Howard Thornton's brilliant silent performance as Art, who I assume is pictured creepy in clown. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, we've talked a lot about Venom, uh, nope. which will be out on October five, October twenty nope. fifth. That yeah, that's why I said. Yep, we've yep. talked what about. I'm it. saying we we have talked about it. Yep, we don't have yes. to talk about it. Yep. Oh, Night Bitch, a December 6th movie about my ex-wife. Oh! Uh, the, title let it go. One, <laughs> the title signifies one of two things, either a desperate cash grab that has nothing going for it, but a shocking name. With, example, Snakes on a Plane, is that a, sh is that a shocking name? 
Yep. Uh, so you can skip down it. to the third, last third uh, sentence. A passion project of Amy Adams, who plays the lead role in an adaptation of uh, Heller, Rachel Yoder's novel about a homemaker who believes she's transforming into a dog. I think I saw a trailer for this. They didn't post one. I did bad. not, but it could be interesting. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Nosferatu on December 25th. Uh, Robert Eggers, who's done some great films, The Witch, Lighthouse, Northman, which we liked. Um, right. He's teaming up with Bill Skarsgård, who's going to play the vampire court. Count Orlock, whom Eggers okay. is hyped up as completely transformed. He'll be joined by Nicholas Holt as Jonathan Harker. Uh, uh, let's see. Willem Dafoe as the vampire hunter. Uh, Eben Eberhardt Van Franz. Not. Uh, yeah. And comes out on Christmas. Um, oh, we have a TBA, but oh, Todd. A lot Todd, of TBA, so we can April, probably move on. Yeah. April and I went to go see this film, and uh, it's uh, it, it, hard to know when we're not going to get to see the next part. So, yeah, well, you know, let's skip the TBAs. We're good. I think we've gone long enough. Correct. Um, but, yes, yeah, The Strangers Part 2, but got to get back with me about that. So uh, anything really jumping out at you? What, what's the most? It's horror films. Film? I mean, we'll see more trailers, and we'll see what's coming out. Yeah. But you know what? Spooky season is always a good time. You know what else is a good time, Charlie? The fact that Megan... The Dream Girl, who is also getting a sequel, is also getting a spinoff uh, called yes. Soulmate with an 8 uh, from Blumhouse and Soul Atomic Mo- Monster. Mo- they're going to have a lot of fun with that on the Weekly Planet. Oh, they're yes. Great, they're, they're the great mates. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So uh, essentially it's yes. described as an erotic thriller with a technological twist. Um, and basically it's, you know, obviously we've got uh, artificial intelligence gone wrong. But in this instance, we uh, get an attempt to create a truly sentient, part, sentient partner. Uh, he inherently turns a harmless love bot into a deadly <laughs> soulmate. Oh, harmless love bot. Yeah, a guy trying to uh, cope with the loss of his recently deceased wife makes a bot that he can <clears throat> single white fe- single white female slash hand that rocks the cradle uh, have a crazy relationship with. Uh, dated for January 2nd of 2026. So 18 months out before you can watch a sex robot movie. Uh, so yeah, we do. What could have, go wrong with any of that? I'm sure that genitals will not be severed. <laughs> have you heard the song, Charlie? Never trust a puppet. No. I give would banks. Hum, hum me a few bars. Never trust a puppet. Puppets are in great song it's 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 so funny we love it it's a big we're a big fan of it in our household yeah oh my gosh well that sounds like fun i'm i'm totally down with that and the creative team is uh let's see here well james uh, wan's dolan, writing yeah, it which james is great Ron, right kate yeah katie dolan uh you are not my mother or something that she did uh from a script written by Raphael jordan uh salvage marines okay those two films i've not heard but like you said james wan uh and uh Blum, yeah, Blumhouse himself, Jason Blum, will be uh, yep. producing along with James Wan. So, yeah, I'm all about it. Sex, robot movies. I can't uh, wait games. to see who they 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 uh, they. He's going to be the sex robot as the soulmate. Oh, yes. t- it'll it'll be it'll be Mia Goth, guaranteed. <laughs> Sorry, Madam Webb, you lose out. Elderly oh, singles no. in your area are looking for you. Uh, or yeah, are looking for robots like you. So, Todd, 1987 gave us uh, probably the best film of the latter half of Mel Brooks's career, in my opinion, which would be Spaceballs. We all loved it. We were junior high headed into high school. We all love Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, you know, Space 1999, Battlestar Galactica, st- things of that nature. And so this was the lampoon that Mel Brooks was famous for. He did it with Westerns and Blazing Saddles. He did it further on of the Robin Hood films in the 90s with Robin Hood. Men Young and Frankenstein, probably my right, favorite it, Mel Brooks film. Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, and for me, it's, you know, Blazing Saddles. I, I find it to be the best comedy of all time, but I dig just because it's so audacious. But regardless, Josh Gad uh, is uh, set to be starring uh, in an actual sequel for this made by Amazon MGM, meaning this will be on Amazon, I'm assuming, or potentially a theatrical release. But regardless. That makes sense because they already did History of the World Part Two together, and that was right, Mel Brooks. Right, it was right, on right. Prime, so it makes sense that that's where they would land. Gotcha. So, yeah, a Josh Greenbaum will direct from a screenplay, yada, yada, yada. Project is in early stages. Plot details kept under wraps. Amazon declining the comments. So, hey, 
not a lot that we can say about it, except that we are, again, very exciting. Um, would be tough for a lot of the stars to come back. But is Bill, did Bill, Bill, no, Bill Pullman is still around. It's Bill Paxton. Paxton, who who's, away. yeah, the two Bills, right. you know, so it's got like yeah, uh, exactly. the, the guys who you don't right. know which one you're talking about until you right. see their face. Right. And John Candy, of course, passed away. He was another star of the original film. Daphne Zuniga is still around. Rick Moranis is still around, but retired. And then, of course, Mel Brooks himself. Let's hope they do this quickly because he is he he's he, I think he's in his late nineties by this point. He's not a young man. He's he's Betty White old. Um, I don't think he's been called you? a young man in seventy years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, th- this is very this is very exciting. But yeah, you you I assume you watch all of the history uh, of the world part two. I haven't. I didn't finish it, but I really enjoyed it. It, it you know oh, hits yeah, and misses uh, what they've done. I, yeah, I yeah. enjoy it quite a bit, but. Um, I am curious, Charlie, with this, where do they go? Are they going to stick with Star Wars for their main focus? Will they hit other science fiction? There was a Spaceballs animated series, which was right. horrible. Yeah, so, I, guess, I, mean, I guess that's why nobody ever talks about it, because it was so bad. I, and I don't, I don't think they can go back to the original trilogy, because unfortunately, all those jokes have been told a billion times, and they're not funny anymore, right. because it's like... Well, yeah, I, so. I, I, yeah, I, I'm simply fearful, and I don't. I hope that Mel didn't really do it in the history of the world, though. I've not. I'm not as well versed in it. I've seen it, but uh, as far as kind of drilling down, doing like the same bits over and over again, I hope that's not what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can God? I mean, Josh Gad's involved. I mean, he's a pretty funny guy. Pretty timely, topical. He's young, so you know, is yeah. he going to hit on? Uh, you know, is it going to be like more like those horrible like spoof films we got in like the the mid two thousands, like, this, like superhero scary, film, disaster film? Movie. Yeah, I hope it's not movie, like those yeah. or epic movie. It, it, all those yeah, were horrible. Right. Um, I right. hope they can add a little bit of based on what I saw with um the history of the world part two. It seems like they can get the they're going to get the list of uh, regulars like what's his name right. uh, like a lot of the folks that are in uh, at midnight. Uh, a lot of the right. comedians that way. You're uh, basically your your LA comedy scene. Basically, you're kind of yeah. Netflix is a joke kind of group. Yeah, exactly. It's Mel Brooks. He typically brings in a lot of you know people that are devotees to him. So Pinoche, he commands yes, that yeah. level of of love. And I'm just wondering if it's going to be prequel or if they're just going to like prequel, sequel, Mandalorian. Well, like yeah. everything will be in scope. Yeah, no, I hope so. And you know, they 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 dabbled little touches of other sci-fi, little Star Trek. They made little Star Trek jokes here and there, yeah. Uh, like you know, the beaming works on Star Trek, and it beams him, you know, with his head on backwards or something. So things of that nature. So all right, well, cool. Uh, I would imagine if it's an early production, feels to me like a twenty twenty six, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would I would yeah. have a vibe on that. So uh, finally, here is a comic that we read. Uh, did we do that one for the patron or was it before that? I can't, oh, we remember. did it for the patron. Like, we did it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we did it for the but uh, yeah, D- DC's human target, uh, is being developed by oh, DC student. Now they're calling themselves DC studios. I think that's yes. new. That's under gun. Un- un- that's under the gun. <clears throat> yes, it would be under the gun. Oh, yes, indeed. But for as uh, it's being developed as a television, uh, human target being developed as a television series for, uh, HBO Max or just Max if you prefer. Um, but yeah, that was that's a that's a cool book. Uh, jog my memory on what the guy does. He's just he's a, he's a kind of he, a he disguises detective. himself. He's a master of disguise. Goes on, takes cases, try to basically uh, either be kind of like uh, someone that would get like if someone's going to get assassinated. Or there's a warning. He would pose as the person that was going to get assassinated or oh, fill good. in okay. or yeah. <clears throat> and there was a television version of it. This I remember in 2010, starring actor Mark Valley as Christopher Chance, the main character, which I and never watched. He, he had a different show where he played Eddie something or other in his, his tagline. It was on Fox or something. His and his catchphrase was like, "I'm Eddie. How do you like me now? Or do you like me so far?" I, it was, "I'm Eddie. How do you, you like, like me, me so now?" Far? That song. How yeah. you like me now? No, he said. Uh, he said, "How do you like me so far?" Um, but that seems like fun. I think. Do you know Rick Springfield also played the Human Target in 1992? I love that. Yeah, that was definitely between albums for him because R- Rick Springfield does continue to dabble in acting. He did a season. Uh, of, so I'm taking uh, that you did not watch it, or you did. 
I don't even know where it is. No, I was not aware of that. So okay. I I do absolutely love Rick Springfield though. I'm I'm his I'm his yeah. number one fan. I'm his number one fan who doesn't want to sleep with him. <laughs> yeah. So um if you want because you can watch our Patreon, if you're on our Patreon, you can watch those old episodes uh where we covered the human target, which was great. Um uh, but essentially the 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 byline is Christopher Chance has twelve days to solve his own murder. Superstar right. writer Tom, uh, Tom King and acclaimed artist Greg Smallwood team for a new noir examination of classic DC character. Basically, he uh, meddles with a lot of of the super, the metas in the DC universe. So, like, you know, he's it basically gets in a lot of cases where they're involved. So what would make this work is you're going to get um, the human target along with a lot of DC cameos and characters. And the fact mm-hmm. that this is going to be a TV series, it's probably going to feel like the boys a little bit and kind of like alias. Like Jessica Jones. But, and but have hopefully that not like, uh, what was that show? Powerless. That was the network show. Remember that one where it was like a superhuman cleanup with Alan Tudyk. And, uh, oh, I love that show. It was cute and funny. I loved, it. I, loved it yeah. I loved it too, but it was a flop. It got canceled, which is a shame. Yeah, I did enjoy yeah. that quite. Ron Funches, Danny Putty. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They, all, they all worked at, it was like basically damage control that was part of Wayne Enterprise. It was done by yeah. Bruce Wayne's uh, cousin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Tudyk playing that role. It was great. Yeah, great his, show. His, I his, actually own cousin, that series on Voodoo. So, oh, gotcha. Yeah, his yeah. Co- his cousin Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah, I think oh, this this makes sense. Uh, Gunn and Saffron are executive producing this, so I think I like what they're doing. Going after things, stories yeah. that are really good in comics, and adapting from the screen, and they're going to capture all different type of audience. So I'm digging yeah. what they're dropping. James it's Gunn fun. is a is a cool dude, man. You, you think he's going to really turn things around for DC and the uh, screens, both big and small? I'm I hope it. so. But the dude really yeah. hasn't missed, and he he, he yeah. brings in some sensibilities that aren't just. Yeah. What we've seen DC do in the past, which is yes. um, kind of use the old Dark. platform that Batman, you know, did in 1989, and keep going with that. Yeah, right. It's all everything's dark. It gets so dark that even when you turn your, the lights off, you can't see what's going on. I mean, we, we've seen <laughs> Peacemaker, Charlie. If that tells you anything, what Gun can do, and the last uh, Suicide Squad—that's good stuff. Get, he's got the keys yeah. to the kingdom. That was a fun one, too. All right. Well, that takes us out of the news. Todd, got to get out my phone. Got to get out that Fuber app, that feeble Uber app, because the Geek Easy awaits. Got to get down to uh, Scuggsville, nasty town, in this gross cab with its AM FM radio. Turns on the dial, and then I hear this ad. Hey, Secret Friends Unite. Let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. Provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. For me this week, um, normally I don't talk about video games, but I did play a demo of the G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra game. Um, 
so there's a trailer out there you can watch. You, there's there's a demo, and there's also some gameplay they are finally showing. Um, this game is a old school brawler beat 'em up. Not a lot to it. It's kind of like the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game or the Simpsons oh, right. game. Uh, it's got right. essentially three main characters you can choose from: Duke, Snake Eyes, and Scarlet. Scarlet right. Yeah, yep. I, thought, and, I thought I thought I, I saw Gung Ho or was that just maybe he was um, in there? He wasn't in the he wasn't in the he wasn't yeah. in the uh, the demo that I could play, uh, okay. which is fine. I got to play so two what, levels. What did you play it on? Can is it just on Switch or? Uh, no, no, it's it's. I mean, I played it on Steam for the demo, but which is on PC, but it okay. is coming to PlayStation Four, Switch, maybe Xbox. Oh, so PlayStation and PlayStation Four Quattro, Not yes, five. Quattro. So I can go buy. Well, you're telling me I can go buy it? Correct. Correct. Yes. This, and, I, this and, I will do. You have my cool. You have my commitment and I will come on your show and talk about it. Yes. And the cool part is it can play couch co-op like side by side or online co-op. So you and I can actually play it together, Charlie, as long Even, as you have PlayStation Network. I, I have in the past. I don't okay. think I have. It you can sign yeah. up for like a year and you get yeah. free games and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like 60 bucks or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's do that. OK, what's the release date? Um, this one, I don't know if they actually had a release date for it. It's coming out this fall. Um, um, yeah. Um, so it's coming and we'll see it's, it's available okay, great. or yeah, no, no date, but I'll let you know, but it will be. Well, yeah. I would, I I would imagine, yeah. I would imagine if there's a demo out that it's gotta be pretty quickly. Right. So yeah, yeah the trailer, the trailer looks fun. They just bit it. They just, uh, took their little intro bits directly from the classic Sunbow series. So even the, the classic, always when they end with Joe's like, it's what you see in the, right behind me. Yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah. So they did do some new animation, which is fun. It's got a yeah. different theme song, which is interesting. And I love the, the, the bad guy types you're fighting, you know, you get like yeah. the his tank, but then you get like the, what is it? The Cobra, it's giant sna- robot thing oh yeah that was from the 84 miniseries where they had to go to the temple they had to go into this temple to because re- that that whole series was about, was about recovering pieces of the weather dominator that had fallen yes. to Earth. And one was in yes. the temple of the temple of death and the other one Correct. was on the roof of the world this was so, in the temple but it was that it was that cobra robot but in the temple there was like an aztec like yes. god robot and the two of them fought and then they ended up falling down a chasm that was the end of one of the episodes and lady j had to save i think shipwreck and flint with one of her spears that had a net in it oh now i want to go back that was my favorite miniseries because there you go as i enjoy as i to, as i to, very briefly as i've told you when i was a kid because my mom worked at a tv station that showed the show she was able to tape that miniseries bring it home on a vhs but the problem was there were it was a direct unedited so there were breaks for the commercials there was like a two and a half minutes and of nothing black. there so we'd have to fast forward and then oh, oh and then back up but as i probably watched it a hundred times i know i imagine you did i know that script bit by bit it's one of my favorites yeah yeah so this is coming out looks a lot of fun i'm glad they're doing this uh you know we just had a teenage mutant turtle ones that happened with the same kind of gameplay we're you're getting a power rangers one so i'm i'm all for all of these properties getting these type of games yeah um so it's fun. I, I will. I, I will commit to playing. So, yeah, I'm I'm totally down with that. It's low, right. on, it's low on skill, high on fun. There we go. And then speaking of high on smarts, but not so many people eaten by dragons. What happened over on HBO Max last Sunday? Yes. House of the Dragon season two launched on HBO Max or Max, the one to watch. And um, this is getting your weekly drop. It's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern every Sunday, yep. which yep. means that uh, every week you'll get a chance to absorb it. Think about right. it. And then know what's going to happen versus feeling like I have to catch up because they've all dropped and I'm now getting spoiled. Right. Um, right. Which is what we're getting with Star Trek Prodigy. We can't yeah, exactly. all 20 episodes on the same day. Yeah. yeah so this is essentially starting right after this last season ended. Uh, we've got uh, Princess uh, Rhaenyra grieving her son dying. Um, and they she's looking for a piece of her son to burn so they can memorialize him. Then she, the, she does find that mm-hmm. dragon's yeah. wing. Uh, we are getting a lot of uh, machinations with um, uh, Matt Smith's character where he wants to do something, but he feels like because he's not going to be the king, he's basically the, the queen's consort. He gets no love. He gets no like powers of ability. So he feels like he's going to take some things on his own to move the yeah. plot forward, regardless if he gets permission or not. Um, right. 
we get the king um, who essentially has a wife who's we think is crazy, but we don't. She's not actually crazy. She's a little bit of clairvoyant because Ooh. she's worried about rats. And for those who watch this, we'll find out oh, why crazy. that is important. But Charlie, this show does not disappoint. It's well written, well directed, greatly acted, and yeah. kind of the great part about Game of Thrones, which is just politics with a little bit of fantasy thrown in. And I'm right. Like, everybody choose the yeah, scene. You're right. You're right. It's not too heavy, but it also doesn't rely too heartily on your depth of knowledge of the previous series, which is which is always a holdback when something's a prequel, right? You'd be like, oh well. Kind of like I told you about, like Lower Decks. It's accessible in a way because it's fun and it's funny, but it's also sprinkled with a lot of Easter eggs that you can go, "Oh yeah, okay." But the plot isn't just driven by those Easter eggs. That's that's the danger of any prequel, in my opinion, is that when you when you really hinge the plot line on something that people maybe haven't seen or don't have a way to have access to that you, you lose momentum. And this, this doesn't do that. I'm not even a fantasy guy and I enjoy this. It's very, it's very riveting. It's very, it's on and at nine at nine o'clock appointment viewing, put the phone down. I'm paying attention, which is a lot for me and my ADD to put down my phone and pay attention to anything. Um, but yeah, no, this is good stuff. This is yeah. good stuff as a, as opposed to this next thing that you're going to talk about. Yeah. So, and, and what I love is at the end of the episodes, they do like the, Hey, this is what's coming up next, but then they do the kind of the recap of what happened and also talk to the actors. It's one of my favorite things oh. because they give the, you more yeah, context. The, the BTS. And yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Just, it's neat. Yeah. It's neat to have it. Yeah. That's, that's very standard for in a lot of shows. I think yeah. the Star Trek as well. So, so, um, um, so yes. like episode four, came out i could have talked about the boys but i rather like you know we'll have more talk about the boys later on the yeah accolade episode four though um i feel like we're at prime this is the star wars that everybody is kind of used to now it's not it's not like doing anything like oh my god it's it's pretty much kind of telling its story we get yeah. a little bit of flim flam with you know uh, who really is, the, you know, Smilo Ren, as we're calling him now. Smilo Ren, um, yes. Yep. And with this, I don't feel like it made me that excited. It was pretty much state of Star Wars. It just it stuff happens. It happens like, OK, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't well, know what to think. It's not the worst thing yeah. the world people talk about. It's just right. I think we you know, know who the big bad yeah. is because I think there's some flim flam going on. And yeah. then. What will it mean? What will it all you know, mean after this is done? What will it all yeah, mean? Yeah, that's very true. If you drill down uh, on this uh, by listening to How I Crime Chronicles, which actually came out late last week, that would be myself and Mark, our regular show, but Peter, who's our, our Code 47 uh, second chair, joined me for that as well, um, is that it's I, – I just felt like it was 30 seconds of excitement versus 32 minutes of walking in boredom. Uh, and then, yeah, and you, you had a, a major character who's been the driving force uh, of the series so far as an assassin. And again, we're in the episode four of eight. Uh, suddenly just say, nope, I'm giving it up. I'm, I'm not interested in being a killer anymore. Such a, um, such a bad, like, turn of motivation. I'm like, right. I mean, even, like, remotely character development and plot and, and things like yeah, I, I just felt like that. Who approved that? Or it's like, who thought that was a good idea? And who would right. say that's a great crafting of a story? I mean, it just, yeah, to I your mean, point. I mean, yeah. And the whole of it was the, the episode was focused around going to a remote planet to find the third of the fourth Jedi that was targeted for death. And then we got absolutely no play. It was Master Kelnaka, who's the Wookiee Jedi. Everyone was very excited about. And then he was murdered off screen. It's just like, come on, come on. Ah, apparently lightsabers can kill again. Yeah. If you get slashed. Because you see, yeah, you see our, our main character, uh, one of our main characters walks into Kelnaka's freighter home and is speaking to him. Is it Osher or May? Now I, now I can't keep it straight. It's May you because see, now yeah, is going to okay. be like, I didn't kill him, but you killed yeah, those oh, others. that's right. Because <laughs> she was there before. You, you saw yeah. my meme uh, comparing May to Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tough. let's not do that. I know. I know. It's a tough one. People are mean. But anyway, um, yeah, but uh, Kalnaka simply took a slash basically on his upper chest from shoulder to shoulder, and that's what killed. Didn't even look like he got stabbed. It was just a cut. 
It was just was a another. slash, yeah. Versus yeah. when uh, it seems like everybody gets stabbed by a lightsaber, it just cauterizes the yeah. wound, regardless if it's through a kidney or a lung. You're okay. Right. Well, you know, a trip in a back could tank. But anyway, yeah, Kelnaka was, I just, there's just no rhyme or reason what's going on here. So, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of controversy, too, that I feel like oh, it's right? a, a whole bunch of nothing. Cad Udimundi, the conehead. Yeah. Uh, the Jedi. conehead. Right. Yeah. They, uh, you know, he had a non canonical uh, birth date, which would uh, pre- preclude him being in the series. Uh, but then the people producing it decided that they wanted him as a cameo, so they changed it. But again, here's a, a very minor character that didn't have much of a canonical backstory, therefore giving the writers of this free reign to do whatever they choose. So, But people are up in arms about it because well, that's, I mean, that's did, fandom, did, I, I mean, guess. Uh, <sighs> It's like pitch meeting. Why? Because we wrote it. I mean, ultimately, right. and I think if anybody gets tied up in canon and Star Wars now, I'm like, you're going to be a very unhappy person because guess right. what? They will change it if it relies on the story. Right, exactly. And it's it's something, and again, you're talking about changing a minor detail of an incredibly minor character. Uh yeah. I'm just glad to see the Coneheads yeah. are back in pop culture. Right, exactly. So you're really hoping that uh maybe you'll see uh, Dan Aykroyd is really his crazy cousin or something, right? Exactly. Consume mass quantities and right. uh, use the force, you, Luke. You use the force. Uh, you, that's what he the, said. Use the thread. Anyway. So uh, I'm going to ask you one more question. This is set 100 years in the past. Yep. Why does it look like it's still set in the same time frame? <laughs> like nothing said, changed. Well, I said <laughs> that when you and Mark and I recorded on episodes one and two. That's what drives me nuts about tech between now and all the way into the sequel trilogy tech never improves it's a the the ships look the same the little hologram thingies are oh there's no technological improvements i mean i mean you know you still have a back to a back to tank is the cure-all medical oh you know what i have a hangnail i'm gonna stick my thumb in the back to and it'll fix it or i lost the hand back to is it back to syringes or something now I did, was, did that appear in this? I missed yes, that. But yes, it just, it, yeah. It just, I mean, think about our own, you know, so the, the Star Wars films cover about 170 years of time frame from this to the end of the sequels. Look at our own medical technology here on Earth in the last 170. What was the pinnacle of medical technology 170 years ago? Penicillin, I assume. <laughs> Right, exactly. Look and look at what we have now. So yeah, it's and and they still have. We're also travel. not riding on horse and carriage, and we don't have right. cool trains anymore. <laughs> exactly. Where you're right, it looks like absolutely nothing has changed except for the fact that Coruscant doesn't look as busy. It's lower to the ground, and I, I did catch this when they show the Jedi Temple a couple times. There is if like really, if you really drill down, there's a row of trees in front of it, which I think is very cool. Is that's, it the Tree of Life or whatever? The, is the no, Jedi that's tree? that's. That's in the temple. This is just uh, regular ass trees. Yeah. So you know what? That's the only thing that really free looks quest. Different. Yeah. Remember, tree, that, of remember that exciting uh, in with, the first comic post? <laughs> for right. Oh, is, oh my. Oh god. Oh. So anyway. Or all right. Post Jedi. That's right. Post Jedi. Post, post Malone. Remember that Not comic you. post the first comic official canonical comic post Jedi, oh. and it was like the the the, the force tree. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah. It was the the yeah. Exactly the Jedi tree of life. <laughs> Which you know that's that's a thing because it showed up in the Tales of the Jedi sure. as well. But anyway, if you want to listen to Peter and myself and Mark uh, break down that and episode three and, and a lot of the foolish controversies uh, around that, please tune in the most recent episode of Holocron Chronicles, which you can find everywhere. Uh, if you agree with me, put start the put start the hashtag Todd Todd was right. Hashtag tab. Or, as always, write into our mailbag, secretfriendsunited at gmail.com, and give us your deep thoughts or let us know on the Discord or threads or on uh, Instagram. But anyway, all right. Well, I'll, go, I'll go very quickly. Uh, I have uh, been enjoying Todd and I on the Patreon. We're going to talk about the Duke miniseries, which was the first of the rebooted G.I. Joe IP when when uh, image took it over uh apart from Larry Hamas book which I'm not as I mentioned I'm not currently reading it cuz they they kind of lost me um and maybe it's because I <clears throat> I missed 150 issues because I, you can't find them. So there's, you know, another because it, that was produced by Image and those are not in circulation anymore. So I know the classic series 
and then I know what's going on now, and I just am not enjoying it. But Duke was a five-issue miniseries. Cobra Commander was a five-issue miniseries. Those are very exciting. Now we have the, the, the next two. I've talked about the first issue of Scarlet, and so I'm getting a feeling they're going to do four or five issue five issue uh, companion pieces, just about a single character. It's like the MCU, no. Charlie. You introduce characters, and then you bring them together. Right, exactly. So this one is about Destro. So we're having a, you know, we have a hero and a villain. So now we have, you know, we started with the two big wigs, Duke and Cobra Commander, now Scarlet and Destro, and next might be, you know, Snake Eyes and the Baroness. Who knows? Um, but we do get uh, seeing things from Destro's perspective uh, with Mars, his global uh, weapons uh, munitions factory. You see him uh, out doing dirty dealings and, you know, funding revolutionaries and stuff like that. Uh, and the consequences of it. Uh, you get appearances by Scrap Iron, who is the missile guy, who is a, one of the classic figures. Mercer, who is one of Slaughter's Marauders, who was uh, a, a Cobra agent who turned to the good side, but before that, obviously, in this continuity, he works for Destro. And you get uh, the villains of this piece, uh, outside of Des Destro being the protagonist, I guess, uh, are the Crimson Twins. Yeah, Tomox and Zaymont, uh, and the Crimson Guardsmen, so who are part of Cobra, uh, but extensive enterprises because it has there's a there's a, a there's basically a, a munitions fair that they miss because they're busy sowing uh, discontent amongst uh, another third world government. So like a gun show. Yeah, yeah, like a big gun show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I dig it. I think I think probably the Scarlet comic of the two of them is more exciting and a little bit more contemporary because it deals with you know ninjas and stuff, which is very synonymous with GI Joe with Snake Eyes, and that it did uh, that that comic included an appearance by Storm Shadow. But but yeah, I'd recommend it. Uh, those are available on Kindle, like every comic pretty much is. So I'd uh, I'd recommend it. So Todd, you've read you've you've read Duke, or you're going to you I, have read I Duke. will be. I will be doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, and have you have you read any of the, the Cobra nope. Commander book? I think it's more more your Not fit because it's because it's a lot of weird and it's Cobra okay. law and stuff, and that's kind of more your jam. Um, but uh, yeah, the, these next two, as I said, they're kind of working their way down. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think eventually these the, all these characters will call together into a new Energon continuity uh, big book. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. So I'd like it. And again, you can find it on Kindle. And like you'd mentioned, if you're listening to this sometime down the road, once those books have been out for just a couple of weeks, the price goes from five bucks to about a dollar 79. So feel free to wait, save yourself some bucks, but it's worth it. I enjoy it. I read them new because Hey readers, I want to let you know what I think. So that is, uh, that's what I'm digging. So that's it. Uh, yeah. All right. So that takes us out of the geek easy. Todd got to get out that air Qantas app. Time to get down to land down under Hologram Tina and the Mutants Await so that we can give them our thoughts here during the Summer of X on X-Men The Last Stand. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! Thank you, Tina. We're sitting in the Thunderdome for a topic or a game to be entertained, and we are now on week three of the Summer of X. Uh, we are counting down to a Deadpool and Wolverine that happens at the end of July. This week, we are tackling X-Men 3, or X-Men The Last Stand. Never officially was 3, just X-Men The Last Stand. This came right. out in 2006. Uh, the human, gene, the human de government develops a cure for mutations, and Jean Grey becomes a darker, uncontrollable person called the Phoenix, who allies with Magneto, causing escalation into all battle for the X-Men. Brett Ratner was brought in to direct this film. A Brink Brian Singer went to make that Tom Cruise Nazi film. No, he made uh, uh, Superman Returns, the one that you and I like. And uh, hates. Oh, got it, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Okay, and then uh, Simon Kinberg and Zach Penn once again back yeah. for this. This is on uh, D Disney Plus, VOD, rental, and physical formats if you got the movie. Um, and for the cast, uh, I'll just look at new members. Kelsey Grammer as the Beast. Um, he was so blue and furry. Yes. Uh, Vinny Jones appearing as the Juggernaut. Um, Kitty Pride, Elliot Page um, had a bigger role in this. Um, ben Foster got to be the angel in this. Right, and then, right. Other than that, we did have Dania, Dania Ramirez and a few other folks as mutants in this as well. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, and because this was the kind of proper, proper end of that 
series. Again, we didn't get Alan Cummings back as Nightcrawler. He's just gone and they didn't explain it. Because I got the t- I got the feeling this was maybe six months to a year after the end of the last film because Scott is still grieving. Not yeah. That, not that it, yeah, yeah, and stuff. And it just but it also seems like, oh, okay, well, we made peace with the US government. Now there's a different president. And there's a mutant in the cabinet. So it almost seems like maybe it was three whole years. But then again, Scott is really mopey. It seems like a long time for him to be grieving. Yeah. 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 So I mean, to be I mean, to be so like broken, like, I mean, you, you lose a loved one. I get it. But to be just like, well, you know. Scott getting in counseling, bud. I mean, he just seemed like he was too overwhelmed. It was a little long. Yeah, it was a long. Yeah. Totally love your life. Totally. But yeah, I, I feels like yeah. to your point, this one did feel closer in like it was like maybe six months. But um, right. But, yeah. but it just it, it seems hard to explain why there's now a brand new president. Yeah. Um, and there's also a you know, there's Hank McCoy is the in the Department of Mutant Affairs, which they didn't have six months ago. So it's very it's very fuzzy. Um but yeah, yeah, I remember they don't, they don't yeah. list dates really in here. They list 86 is when they went to see. So basically it right. kicks off with, with Charles and Eric meeting Jean Grey and her parents. Um, right. We get that invitation. We find out Jean is quite powerful, the most powerful right. level five mutant. Uh, but then we're right. also then set forward 10 years later in 1996, oh. where we first meet um, you know, young um, Warren Worthington, the third, correct. Uh, Cutting yeah. off his wings. We find out that. So that's 96. So then fast right. forward, um, assuming he's Ford, like 10 years old. Yeah. Not right. Yeah. Because again, the, the only real setting of the films, first film came out in 2000. Uh, mm-hmm. the second one was, through. so these movies are all three years apart. Kind of like the original star Wars. Pretty movie. much. Yeah. But it's never pinned down when they actually start no um and i except guess this saying yeah except this plot yeah. saying 86 96 so no, 2006 no, it, it to said, 10 years later but it said 20 years ago 10 years ago it didn't say 86 and 96 well i'm That's just re- i'm just looking at imdb what it tells right now and oh, it says well, 1986 that, 1996 right, and then 10 years later if we're in right. 2006 if they're following the, yeah but yeah, so, but that's that's an if that the problem is that's an if that's not in the film. Somebody in IMDb I, just I assume we're, we're in just modern time, two thousand six. So that's where gotcha. I'm set. But if and it is again, three years after the last with, film ended, oh, with, wow. with with the way that everything gets all topsy turvy and timey yep. wimey with the X Men films, because then you get into the McAvoy films and you have the two Wolverine films, and it none of it really plays very well with each other. It's kind of irrelevant, I guess is the best way to say it. But yeah, we assume this is sure. set at the time it was filmed, 2006. Good enough. Exactly. Uh, essentially, we're fast forward. We find out that uh, the the lab is uh, from more than Worthington II. creates a yeah. cure. We find out how the cure is being made because it's essentially from a mutant called, in, in the comics, it was Leech. So Leech well, was... Yeah. It's interesting his name because when they're looking at a piece of paper, his little file, it does say leech on it. So he's leeching this as well. And in the comic, he was green. He looked he like was a, a little green. Alien. He was a little green yeah. guy with the beanie cap. Yep. yep. Um, he and Artie so, would hang out together. Artie was like an orange, like a redded, red skinned was, mutant little guys. Like, yeah. Like an and guy. yeah. apparently they're able to just suck out the blood of right. leech to make and it sure. Some- yeah. And for some reason, uh, Worthington Labs is at Alcatraz, the old prison, which ah, is, you know, what else they, you, can do you with know that? what? That makes for an iconic, uh, well, it's a it's a state park uh, or it's a national park. So that's what it is. But that does make for an iconic final scene, which, of course, we'll get to in a moment. You can under kind of understand why they wanted a great big set piece for something that was all filmed in Vancouver anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So, yeah, uh, the, there's a uh, there's a mutant. Uh, vaccine that suppress permanently su- suppresses the mutant antibody which is being called a cure so naturally it explodes into controversy and uh correct me if i'm wrong is that storyline adapted from something in the comics isn't that god kills or was that that no that was that the previous no one? no that so was striker is, and his son no this is right this is a this new, original new story um yeah because there's never really been i mean because if you think about it, we had like the gun that shot um uh, storm where she lost her powers. Okay, that. so there's a little adaptation so, of a concept of it. So kind let, of, let, yeah. You know, and and it's interspersed with uh, being a 
a direct a, a direct sequel of events from the previous film where Jean appears to have been killed when the dam at Alkali Lake breaks and she pushes them away so they can escape. Um, but Scott in his grieving three years later drives there and he's, you know, yelling at the universe and shooting his laser beams in the water. And that makes Jean come out. She's alive. And, uh, that has, you know, that, and that has nothing to do with the dark Phoenix saga that we saw in the comics. And that was, that was a whole different, whole different thing because dark Phoenix became two different people. And Jean ended up in a, in a cocoon at the bottom of Jamaica Bay. And when she was finally rescued years later, that's when we got X factor. I remember all that. Yeah. But so here, here's my question. And then eventually she, she goes on and she, you know, her powers become unlocked and she kills Scott, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, and she ends up, you know, with Magneto and his brotherhood and all the cameo mutants. But here's my question. Do do you feel, and maybe maybe I'm, I'm hopping ahead here and we can kind of dance around this, but do you feel that this story about the, you know, mutant cure, which I thought was a great storyline, uh, would that have been better without the whole Dark Phoenix part? That's the, like, that's the thing, right? I mean, it feels like were they sma- trying to they kind of smash the two together and they just don't really seem to complement each other. Um, and then you have, you know, the death. Scott is dead. And then when uh they're they're both trying to, you know, acquire Jean after she goes full Phoenixy, she kills uh Xavier, which is like, oh my god. Well, um, yeah, I mean, because it that I mean that's all lying into the fact that uh when they when she was young Jean basically was showing so much power that there was that some to elements repressed. to Jean where he repressed it now we don't truly know if she knew that was done to her it sounds like it, she didn't so basically right. felt she felt like part of her was being denied yeah, Wolver- I did it to protect well, yeah. you. Wolverine um, gets on his high horse and he's like, well, sometimes when you cage the beast, the beast wants to fight or whatever. And it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're a stone cold murderer. Maybe you shouldn't kind of kind of try to take the high moral ground over some well, shit. Well, that he kind of expects a little bit more from Xavier, right? He kind of like, right. I can be an asshole, yeah. but aren't you not supposed to be an asshole? You're supposed yeah, to be aren't the, you the good guy? Supposed to, the guy who never does anything wrong. But as we see, Xavier was, Totally on the money because when Jean is out of control, she'll she'll set the world on fire. It's bad. She's totally yes. unstoppable. She's complete id. Like he, as you see, while she's you know macking a Wolverine and you know tearing his skin and everything and stuff, she's just she's nothing but pure desire and and danger. Um, yeah, so she, she really like, should she, be off the chain. She, her goal is just not to be controlled. That is all right. she wants. She doesn't want to be controlled. She can right. be easily swayed if she feels like you're helping her not be controlled, which where Magneto basically takes advantage of that and leads her uh, to go along. I mean, we do get some interesting story beats. So we like Mystique is, you know, obviously was she was captured. And then um, there's a really cool mission to rescue Mystique in a basically a rolling prison. And, Which I, and, I I loved. I made a note. I said, if you had a rolling prison, wouldn't you move it at night as opposed to in the broad daylight? Um, because Magneto has no problem tearing that apart and, and rescuing. Uh, exactly. They I guess they can't make exactly. cars out of plastic. Hmm. Nope, can't <laughs> do it. Yeah, but it's but it's it's very telling that um, you know in the in the rescue, Mystique gets shot by the cure darts and loses her abilities. Yes. And Ma- Magneto says, Oh, you're so beautiful, but you're out. And no, no, you were, you were so that. beautiful. Meaning he loved yeah. how she looked naturally right. and how he, she's he, a human. You're dead. He leaves me. her laying there naked and just walks away. Um, yeah, not su- super, super not cool, especially considering what ends up happening to Magneto. Um, in the, in the third act, but anyway, not to jump ahead. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, so we're kind of gathering the forces along with us in the rescue. There were multiple mutants in the trailer. We get Ma- Jamie Madrox, the multiple man. We get, uh, yep. Uh, um, we, we get, um, juggernaut Vinnie Jones. Uh, I not, think that was a, a body suit. Was that a body not suit? A gr- not a great juggernaut because really the, the juggernaut that we see in Deadpool two is a very comic faithful adaptation of the juggernaut because he's supposed to be 10 feet tall and 10 yes. feet wide not just some guy in you know padded in a brick helmet whatever. yeah in a brick and then, helmet. And, uh, but, let's see who was the other uh it was it um arc light was the arc the light. Very, was the very david bowie looking couldn't really tell couldn't really tell if it was boy or girl um and then you had the one uh, asian actor who was in lost played the guy with the spikes 
Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and then we do get like kind of like um, Magni was trying to rally the troops. We do get him um, basically coming in to talk to them. He kind of recruits other people. To your point, we get Callisto. We get uh, uh, once again, forgot his name. You mentioned him from Lost. Uh, I don't know if it's oh, listed here in my list. I, 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 it's not in what you posted here. Sorry. Uh, no, it's not. And it's probably further in. But yeah, uh, so we do get some interesting like cameos of certain characters, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we get Marrow uh, when Wolverine is trying to track them down when he goes. Oh, to the right. Camp. Yeah. We get Marrow, but Marrow is a woman who can throw bone, uh, basically knives. We right. get a dude doing it. Yeah, um, exactly. And I swear the dude was somebody, and you know, there, there are little gay Wolverine um, ends up becoming, you know, a much more central character because he ends up leading the team in the third act because yep. there's only six X-Men in the end of it, which is weird because, well, I guess, I guess that number is normal because really there's only like six or seven Avengers. I guess that's pretty normal of a core team. Um, and fortunately, you know, they, they, most of them have decent powers, like you know, uh, you know, Kitty can run through things, which is great. She has this big tete a tete with the Juggernaut, and that's a fun part of it. Um, and uh, Storm does great. Uh, you have Colossus in the mix. Uh, Todd made me think of you when Colossus was walking down the hall when Bobby was like, "Where's Rogue?" Because Rogue is one of the characters who voluntarily takes the cure um, because her her power. Yeah, is so- she's a very small role in this. Obviously, yeah. Wolverine tells her, you know, when the, and she's hearing about this, she's very upset. Yeah that she can't touch her boyfriend she sees yeah. uh bobby kind of and not, I, I think he's just being a nice friend to kitty kitty yeah and she mistakes it as like oh i think he's gonna leave me for yeah, kitty right. um, so he was but, yeah so she she went off and, and there's a great line at the end when she comes oh, i was gonna say the thing that reminded me with Klaus is about you is uh the the big tv he's carrying reminds me of the tv we had in our apartment when we were in oh college. yeah 32 inches and 300 pounds. Yeah, the big back-ended television. Um, But no, at the very end, she does go and get the cure, but she comes back to say goodbye to Bobby. And he said, oh, God, I didn't want this. And she said, no, I wanted this. I want to have a normal life. Yeah. She has this whole, yeah, which, you know what? I I get where she's coming from. And there's certainly an allegory when it comes to medication and things like that. And you can understand that while mutation is a blessing for some of these people because they can do great stuff and uh, use it for good or for bad. For some people, it's it's a it's not really a gift because they can't lead a life it, normal in any way, shape, or form. You know, it's like if you're a mutant, but you know you're you know fifteen feet tall and green with like nine legs and three heads. That's not a great mutation. No, you, know, you, you, can't, you can't hide. You can't out. really you, live. You can't no. really live. Or, you can't or have like a job. Nightcrawler, and, yeah. right? Yeah, Nightcrawler was the same type of character. Um, I did find it interesting. Callisto. They basically merged her abilities with um, Caliban because oh, she could track go. mutants as well. Um, right, yeah. right, right, right. A, a yeah, mixed bag yeah. of certain characters. Yeah. Yeah, they they did mix them in, and a lot of them didn't get names. They were just even like, Psylocke oh, was, was shown for a very quick minute because I'm like, who just okay. appeared through that wall? It was Psylocke. I'm like, oh, okay, they didn't even do her power. But I right. mean, they, yeah, this was one kind of like what we were talking about previously. It was filled with a lot of Easter eggs that, as yeah. a big fan, you could appreciate, but as a casual viewer, didn't really didn't really mess with anything, which I think is important because if you you know, if you if you predicate too much of like, well, you really had to see this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing. It's what it's what Marvel is running into, yeah. you know, now with like you got to watch all their shows so you know what's going on in the movies. And maybe that's a big part of why the Marvels failed. You know what I mean? So but anyway, um, so we get to the third act. Uh, I think one of the greatest set pieces uh, that you ever see is Magneto exerting the most of his power we've ever seen by picking up a central part of the golden gate bridge. Of course, remember San Francisco is our setting and dragging it between mainland San Francisco to land on Alcatraz. So his stream of army can just easily walk across. Couldn't he have just like made like a metal boat and he could have put them in a bunch of cars and say, get in the cars. I'm going to have you go over. Right. I I, could have, you know, he could have because because this was super cool. Let, Let me, let's face it. Well, he's also eliminating a bridge, so people can't get there easily now. Maybe. Well, they they wouldn't have been getting to Alcatraz anyway. They need they they just do it on boats. So anyway, part of it is ridiculous, but again, I think they were really going in Brett Ratner style. The director, I think, it was very typical of the the grand set piece. And there's the big slug out at Alcatraz, and our six X Men show up just in time they of course fly across the country but they have a supersonic jet um and uh well, yeah they, big f- 
I think one thing I think that they they finally learned is like, oh, bringing metal guns to fight Magneto, bad idea. They get they get they get get rid of all of your metal, and here's yeah. plastic weapons. They have um, that. It's they have that that hole where you see all the soldiers turning their stuff. Yeah. I swear to God, that was a voiceover from uh, you know. Icon Arlie Ermy. Didn't that sound like him? But you never saw it. Anybody. Was, it was. It was I saw that he was yeah. it was voiced. And I'm like, that's yeah. an odd choice. Right. But, but sure. I mean he he's an iconic voice that I think people would pick up on. So it, I I think I think it works. So. Him for his voice, not as not as beautiful mug. Right, exactly. Yes, absolutely. So anyway, big slug out. Uh, you know, uh, uh Kitty has to go in and rescue Leech from the Juggernaut. That's a cool set piece. Uh, you got to see a uh, Kelsey Grammer swinging around his beast was really weird. Like it was really oddly choreographed. I thought it just he just <laughs> using him as like an ape. I mean, kind of yeah. that type of oh, maybe. Okay, sure. I see that, but uh, yeah, everybody got their moment. Um, but then you know, eventually, Gene. Uh, there's you know, Ice. There's Iceman versus Pyro. The because the, they were buddies in the previous film. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Magneto. The the uh, they do a little one two punch where Wolverine attacks him and is easily defeated. But then Beast jumps up behind him and stabs him with the cure. So Magneto is loses his powers. He's not a mutant anymore. And then G- and now it's Gene's turn. She steps up and she turns a bunch of soldiers to ash, but Wolverine is going to stop her and he's walking towards her and she's blowing him apart. His clothes are blown off. And I turned to April and I said, I hope she doesn't blow his pants off. That'd be the worst. <laughs> but his, he, animated, his, his adamantium uh, dong. And <laughs> no, a, 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 a damn, a, a, a damn, a damn dong mantium. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I, I was um, worried that you were going to be okay there for a second. Like, yeah, you I be think, able to get I through think, this, Charlie? <laughs> I think I'm having a stroke. So he does finally get up to her, and in your very typical fashion, he's like, I love you. And she's like, Save me. And so he stabs her, and she dies, and he's, Burr! and that sets the scene, the scene for the Wolverine, which is, again, I don't know what it is about Gene because the two of them never slept together, but apparently, no. When you love Jean and, and she dies, you spend the next five to seven years living in a cave because that's what you see that's in the Wolverine. That's what you do, movie. man. You just got to go, you know, I've had bad breakups in my time, but I never lived in a cave or nor did I grieve about it for five to seven years. She's that's the just, dream. She's yeah, the exactly. dream. Yeah. She's the dream girl. Um, so that's the end of it. So, uh, yeah, uh, then we do the school get school as we, well. The school is, re- is basically there's a decision at the end. Do we keep the school open or not? And yeah, be like, well, we should. And then, at the end, uh, Ben Foster comes in and said, I've heard this place is safe for mutants. And then Halle Berry says, it is. And well, that was it, it wasn't that wasn't really at the end. It was before the third act. It was because he joined in. So remember, he saves his own dad when they try to yes. chuck his dad. Yeah. So but anyway, yeah. Uh, then so then the, the school goes on and you see this great scene at the end where Leech is now a member of the school. He runs up and hugs Storm. And that's very nice. Um, but uh, you do see you go back to San Francisco and see the bridge is being rebuilt and you have uh, all. Apparently, this is in every city where you have old men playing chess in the park, and Wolverine sitting there, play, or Magneto sitting there playing by himself, depowered. But he's trying, and he 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 just barely makes one of the pieces moves, which means the cure does not permanently, obviously, maybe, suppress, it may, or maybe it's suppressed. Yeah. Maybe he won't get his powers back completely, or you know. Um, but but yeah, if you yeah. if you follow the continuity, uh, you know, we see Rogue in the Rogue Cut of X Men. Uh, the days of future past which is the sequel to this and magneto has his powers back in that as well so yeah but then again remember wolverine yeah. also days gets his of future past back. And a lot to basically change what happened in this movie yeah. too so yeah um, that's very true yeah yeah that's very uh, true because so singer didn't direct this film obviously yeah. and then he did direct right. that film so i felt like he wanted some so it was it was, kind of, it was kind of like a ryan johnson jj abrams star wars kind of thing Kind of, or like Lucas just yeah. like, oh, I'm going to change it. And this is my version now where we can have right. a really weird looking job of the hut. That's what it needed. <laughs> we could have a pizza of the hut. So anyway, that's 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 well, the film. So go ahead, please. I was going to say, lastly, though, with the Magneto scene, if it had been an MCU film, Charlie, that would have been the stinger. Yeah, you're right. And I don't think you- that makes it worth sitting through trail or the, the the credits credit. just to see that part so right because yeah, yeah because the actual stinger goes back to uh just a bit when 
uh, Xavier is running one of his classes earlier in the film, and he's like, here's my friend Moira McTaggart, and she's got this guy that seems very random. She she presides over this guy who is uh, perfectly healthy, um, but his he has no consciousness or whatever. And then the stinger is, is that you go back to that same room, Moira comes in with a clipboard, and she's just like, good morning, blah, blah, blah. And then you hear Charles' voice go, good morning, Moira. And he's like, oh, Charles, is that you? And her big Scottish accent is like, okay, so... That didn't make a lot of sense, but it felt like that was, it was, wait, this had a stinger. Yeah. You didn't know. I looked at the credits. I was going through and I'm like, is there anything at the end? I seem to remember because I, I own this, but I also, I just watched it on Disney plus. They cut it out of the Disney plus version. It's there, but you gotta, you gotta tab through. Yeah. But that, that's the stinger. So look, look it up on YouTube. What I hate with Disney plus sometimes is is instead of letting you watch credits, it it takes the credits away and is like, and like you have to, Get the credits they, back to see what they're, happened. Yeah. They're trying to force you to the next one. But anyway, yes, there is a stinger. You do have to sit through the credits. Dang. But that's the stinger. And as it, as this is the last true film in this saga, it doesn't really make any difference. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there is a stinger. So, yes, you can find that. But you can also probably look it up on YouTube. So, all right. So, any final thoughts before we give it a rating? Um, I will say, I don't know why, but I was really thinking – Oh God, this movie's going to be so horrible. Oh my God. I'm like, then I watched it. I'm like, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. I think it was less than X2, but it wasn't like there was anything like, I mean, I'm the juggernaut bitch. It's just like, that's a meme. It was a meme based upon a meme. But beyond that, I'm like, it's fine. I mean, it's, 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 it's serviceable. It wasn't as bad as the last two X-Men films with Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix. I, you know, I would agree with you to your point. I think as time goes on and there have been worse films in the X-Men franchise, it's kind of, it's the scales of justice. If there's more crap over exactly. there, it makes the other films kind of tilt up. So I, I liked, yeah, I'll go back, you know, to piggyback off what I said earlier. I liked the mutant gene suppression thing and that being a controversial great for some bad for others but if the government makes us take it that's unacceptable but that's not what was happening um so i liked that part but to smush it together with dark phoenix i mean dark phoenix becomes especially bland as an x-men story because it's been done 50 times they did it in the cartoon they did it here they do it again in the mcavoy films um and it's just and and the two that were on on film don't have anything to do with what we saw in the comics which was a very epic you know story of space and all this different stuff and you know the the phoenix being two different people and you know gene actually being in a cocoon you know cocoon and then they bring her back and you know phoenix was never her in the first place or dark phoenix never was so um if you pulled the two stories apart, I think it would have made for a better film, but I'm kind of in the same camp with you. It's very serviceable, particularly in light of what, what happened with the McAvoy films. We started out super strong. I know first class is one of your favorite X-Men films, but it was just, it was like, it was like a, like a boy scout rocket racer car going straight down a hill with how bad it got. Oh, you're muted, bud. You're, you're muted. My dog there is barking. Sorry. It's like too good, too bad, too good, too bad. So right, right, um, right, right. Yeah, because we got uh, we got this, and then we got Origins, and then we right. got the Wolverine and Logan. Right. So then it's like no, 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 it was Wolverine, and then it was Days of No. no oh, I'm was... just talking about if like oh, you look right. at like the Wolverine focused ones, you did get two right. of those. You had one bad one, super, super. and then you got oh, First Class, good. and then um, Days of Future, Future Past, Past, and then two, the last two, and then bad, two ones. bad ones. Yeah, that that definitely fits. So, all right, well, let's wrap it up. So, out of ten, out of nine claws, okay, ten claws, but the, or okay, there's three, out of ten fingers. There's, <laughs> there's six get, claws. Look behind me. There's six <laughs> claws. So, out of six claws plus four claws being ten claws, how many claws do you give this? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna give it like a six and a half. So I don't know. One's mostly in. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll give it a six and a half just because there were some fun cameos and yeah. I did like the story of the, the cure Warren Worthington kind of having a, a moment and yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the dark Phoenix being thrown in is kind of like a, it, it just was a bad idea and it, it, just it turned like, out, yeah. it could have been, it could have been worse by means it could have been worse. It was just a wet fart in that. Yeah. 
A turd in the wind, as Venom would say. They really could have just given Jean like a movie off and then they discovered her in the Why didn't you give her, yeah, give her like her spinoff and her going through, being maybe coming, not revealing herself to the mutants, kind of she's alive and she finds her path and then it leads to something else. But what if, Charlie, what if? What if? So I'm, I'm with you. I'll probably go with the six for this. Cause yeah, I found the, the, again, the, the dark Phoenix, uh, kind of tack on to, to be useless. Um, yeah. because I really did. While that was the a story, if the B story, if you want to switch it, whatever it is, the, the anti, you know, the mutant, uh, suppression one, I liked that very much. So I'm definitely going to say that was spirit bit, but yeah, six out of 10, but, um, but again, end of an era, because next week we are heading into what's our next X-Men film. The look at me behind me. It's his origin story. We get the blob. Oh. We got Deadpool's premiere. Yeah, and that's 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 gonna be an interesting one because while parts of it were really bad, it was a favorite of my son's. My son Noah, who turns twenty four next week, so he was nine when that movie came out. Well, Charlie, really you know, it. young kids have great taste. <laughs> Yes. Well, you know, they all love the prequels, didn't they? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know what? It's the kids that are wrong. Oh, yes, exactly. So, uh, it, but that'll be fun because there were, there are parts of that I did enjoy, but it is, it is a, uh, it is uh, by all regular definitions, a terrible film. But it anyway. would be the movie. I think that most greatly informs Wolverine Deadpool movie. I guarantee you, Charlie. Right. Yeah, I agree because it was the film that they, they appeared in together. So anyway, all right. That is the show, friends. As always, thank you for joining us, Todd. Where do people find you out there? They follow me on the threads at t Oxtra, at Secret Friends Unite. Check out our Discord. Check out our YouTube channel and check out our webpage. And also check out our Patreon just to get teasers of what we're doing. And you can see some of the past stuff we have. So check that out. Correct, Amundo. And I am over on threads and Instagram at the C3, uh, T H E C E E T H R E E. Spell that sucker out. I do spend a heck of a lot of time over at our Secret Friends Unite uh, Discord. Uh, April and I also started a Discord uh, for Star Trek fans in Michigan. That's a fun, non anything club related thing that's just ca- that's called uh, United Trekkers of Michigan. It's easy to find. Uh, and even if you're a trekker that doesn't live in Michigan, we had to start somewhere. But it's just where people are talking about Star Trek, share and stuff, et cetera. We would love to see you there. Um, and with that, uh, friends, as always, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Snicked! This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server. Or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.